That's right, I'm Martin. How do you do? My name is Don Edmonds. Good to know you. I'm a representative of the steel industry. How do you do, sir? I'd like to talk business if you have the time. We always have time for that. Have you seen our secretary, Helen? Yeah, she was here but had to leave. Said you'd be back in a short while, so I just waited. Fine. How can we help you? Well, something of vital importance. This is the section, gentlemen. Rough terrain, almost inaccessible. And this is Iron Mountain. Now, the ore in this mountain is vital. Not only to us, but to the whole world. I read something about that. Why haven't they started mining operations? Well, it's been held up by one signature. This quarter section right here. The title is Clouded. We were finally able to learn that it was homesteaded in 1907 by a man named Jeb Collins. Now we've managed to locate his only living relative, a grandson. Lives here on a small farm. That's near Spring City. And you want us to fly you there? Time is of the utmost importance. Your services are being sought first, gentlemen, because of the record you've established. Thanks. We'll take the job. Good. And I'll be ready in an hour. Good. We'll gas up and be set for you. Fine. a mighty attractive offer for certain. That's what we think, Mr. Collins, as I've said. But there's uh, only one trouble. What's that? I don't own that quarter section on Iron Mountain. But your grandfather homesteaded it. So far as we've been able to learn, you're his only living relative. <laughs> Ain't you taking a lot onto yourself for thinking that? What do you mean? Now, it looks to me like you unhitched the cart from the horse before the horse was gone. Kind of forgetting my granddaddy, ain't you? But according to our records, Mr. Collins, your grandfather was born in 1852. Yes, sir. That's correct. In the way I count, he's 105 years old. 105? What? You mean to say Jeb Collins is still alive? <laughs> Just said so. Well, I, I can't believe it. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to believe it if you expect to buy up his property. Well, just where can we find your grandfather? Uh, up on uh, Iron Mountain. Got a little cabin up there. Been living there about uh, 50 years now. <laughs> I've been trying to get him to come down here and live with me for a long time, but I just can't budge him. No, he, he said he'll come down and live with me when he gets too old to take care of himself. <laughs> and he just lives up there all alone, huh? Yeah, he don't cotton much to folks. But <laughs> looks like he's going to have a lot of company from now on. Because uh, you ain't the only one has been looking for him, you know. What's that? Yeah, a couple of fellas, let's see, the name was uh, Sitwell, Sitwell and Davis, that's it. They was here about four days ago. And when I told them about Grandpappy, <laughs> they hightailed up the mountain like a couple of scared coyotes. <laughs> you know who these people are? Only by reputation. They're land speculators. Did they pack in? Yeah, there's horseback. Well, then maybe we're still not too late. Well, thank you, Mr. Collins. You've been very helpful. Yeah. A lot more than Grandpappy's going to be, I reckon. Well, let's find out. Shouldn't be too far from here. Hey, look. Boy, that's beautiful. Looks like Jeb Cohen's found a Shangri-La. No wonder he likes it up here. Yeah. Well, here's hoping you're successful. Thank you. What in thunder and tarnation is that? Well, it's a whirly bird and it's gonna land. Well, I ain't gonna have no infernal machine messing up my property. You suppose it's them two fellas coming back? Gosh, Jeb, I no. Well, no matter anyway. I want you to get rid of them. You understand? Well, aren't you even gonna talk to them? No! All you've got to do is to tell them to get in that contraption and hightail it out of here. I'll cover you from inside.
Hello, son. Hi. My name's Chuck Martin. This is my buddy P.T. Moore. This is Mr. Edmonds. Hello. Oh. Glad to meet you. I'm Tommy Barnes. Boy, that sure is a beautiful whirly bird. Well, thank you, Tommy. You live here with Jeb Collins? No, I live down the mountain in Spring City. Oh, then you're a friend of his. Uh -huh. I guess I'm about the only one he has. Come up here a couple of times a month to visit. He's a pretty amazing man, isn't he? I'll say. He's the greatest. He the fellow that just went inside? Yes, sir, but he doesn't want to see anybody. He's got his old rifle. You'd better leave. Well, look, son, maybe you can help us out. We've come a long way to see him. It's awfully important. Gosh, I, I don't know. That whirly bird got him pretty mad. And, well, I know he wouldn't sell his land. How do you know what we came for? Well, there were two other fellows here. Just left this morning. Went away as mad as hops because Jeb said no. They mentioned there'd be more coming. Sit well in Davis. Tommy, would you ask Mr. Collins if he'd speak to us for just a few minutes? Well... We've come a long way. It's awfully important. He usually means what he says, mister, but... Well, I'll try. Jeb, they want to talk to you for a couple of minutes. They say it's real important. The answer's still no. Just tell them to get in that concerned birdie word or whatever they call it and hightail it out of here. I mean? You sure that's the steel company, man? Who else would it be? What now? You have a change in plans? Nope. They won't get any farther with the old man than we did. The only added problem we have is that helicopter. Come on. We've got work to do at Devil's Gorge. That rifle he's speaking of. You think he'd really shoot? Jeb wouldn't hurt anybody honest. Tell you the truth, the gun isn't even loaded. Don't think it'd work if it was. Please don't tell him I told you that. We won't say a word, son. Come on. I ain't fooling, gents. So schedule. Just hear us out first, Mr. Collins. Please. Well, it's going against the grain. But come on in. Ain't you folks got no respect for a man's privacy? Well, God darn strangers poking around this mountain in the last two days than I've seen in 50 years. I had to keep you away with my rifle. But I don't like to go shooting folks with the boy around. We understand your feelings, Mr. Collins, but we had to talk to you. Sonny boy, nobody has to talk to me. My name is Edmund, sir. A group of steel companies sent me here on important business concerning your property. It's needed badly by the steel industry. Steel? That's the stuff to make these new contraptions with, is it? Yes, among other things. Well, I don't need none. And I ain't got none to sell, and so we might as well skedaddle. You're wrong, Mr. Collins. You should sell. Your land is rich in iron ore. And I'm authorized. Why, them creeping, crawling the sidewinders? They never said nothing about ore. They don't work that way, Mr. Collins. They want to buy the land as cheaply as possible. Then sell or lease it to Mr. Edmonds here at a tremendous profit. Yeah, well, I got news for them. They ain't going to sell nor lease, and neither am I. Mr. Collins, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I do think that you owe Mr. Edmonds the courtesy of listening to his proposition. Well, I ain't never been called the most courteous man on earth, but go ahead and say whatever you got to say. We have purchased all the land on Iron Mountain except yours. All the clearances have been signed except for your quarter section. Before we can begin mining operations, so, Mr. Collins, in view of the importance of mining Iron Mountain, I'm authorized to offer you $150,000 for your land. Holy cow, Jeb. Just think what you could do with all that money. Money? What good's money? I've got everything I need without it. No, we're not arguing that, Mr. Collins. The point is this. You must have read in the papers about how iron ore supplies are dwindling. Well, this very rich deposit can be vitally important to our progress. I don't read no papers. They ain't seen one more in 50 years. And you can keep your progress. I ain't selling what's mine. Tommy, stoke up the stove. I got some chores to do. Sure looks like a tough nut to crack. Sure does. Well, all the
the modern conveniences. I get by, son. What have you got against progress, Mr. Collins? Just a lot of nonsense. Hustling, bustling, crazy nonsense. Motor cars, electricity, crazy contraptions. I thought you didn't read the papers. I don't. But I saw it all coming, believe you me. And when Tommy comes up to visit me, he tells me what's going on down below. Have you ever thought about all the good progress has done? Yeah, you can put all the good has done in your eyes, sonny. Like dynamite. I saw dynamite demonstrated back in 1866. And what has dynamite done? Nothing. But then I blow up the whole world. Oh, come now, Jeff. Dynamite has done some good. I mean, they've used it to make dams for water power, build tunnels and highways. Watch highways. Just a lot of smooth cement so a multitude of nitwits can go tearing around, smacking into one another. That's just when people don't use good sense, Mr. Collins. Even on a horse, you have to use your head. No, highways have linked the country. It's brought people closer together, made travel easier. Yeah. The telephone made talking easier, too, didn't it? And what have we got left? Just a bunch of screeching, babbling women folks yakety yakking over the telephone night and morning. Oh, come on, Jeb. Don't tell me you're a woman hater, too. Oh, no. I had me a mighty good wife a long while ago. And if she was here today, she'd be helping me suck corn for dinner. Not just standing around like you fellas. <laughs> well, as long as I aim on feeding you, I think it'd be fair if you chipped in and stuck out of it. <laughs> okay, we'll give you a hand. Mr. Collins, about that... Ah, oh, that's enough of that. If you don't mind sleeping on straw, you can spend a night right here in the barn. I don't think you'd be fool enough to try to fly that machine of yours in the dark. Thanks, we'll take you up on that. Here we go. Yeah, yeah just put the corn apart, boy. There. Say, Tommy. I want to ask you something. Is Jeb this stubborn all the time? Oh, me and the boy get along fine. Except for his imagination. What do you mean? Oh, he tells some whoppers. I've always told you the truth, Jeb. Oh, come on now, son. You remember the time you told me about that little box that sits on the table in your house and all you do is turn the crank and pictures come out? You mean television? Oh, he told you the same story, did he? Television is a reality, Mr. Collins. Yeah. No, he's not kidding, Jeb. They do have television. Hospitals, schools, professional men, they all use it to good advantage. Not to mention the entertainment it offers. Ah, uh, just plain nonsense. That's what it is. Two o'clock. We gotta get these riddles going. Two o'clock? He was after four when we got here. Jeb's watch always says two o'clock. <laughs> yep. I busted it the first day I got here. Fifty years ago. Eight lost a minute since. <laughs> Don't you ever want to know what time it really is? No! What difference does it make anyhow? Well, we got to get this cooking going. I bet you fellas are hungrier than mavericks. Me and Jeb are going berry hunting tomorrow. Maybe you'd like to take some back with you. Sure we would. Where do you get these berries? On Blue Mountain. Just over Devil's Gorge. Fine. I wouldn't walk across that bridge the way it is right now. It's a long ways to the bottom. Yeah. Isn't there another way, Sidwell? This sort of thing. Look, we've got a multi-million dollar deal just that close to us. The old man out of the way, his property goes to the grandson. I know we can make a deal with him. Sure, it sounds fine. But aren't you forgetting there's a kid involved? Accidents happen, Davis. If you're worried about it, you're out. As of now. It's not that. Good. Come on. We gotta get to work on this bridge. You about ready, boy? Two o'clock. We better get going. 
If you fellas want breakfast, you'll find bacon and eggs inside. Bacon. Hot. But don't forget to clean up your plates. You can't afford to be wasting food. Come on, son. <laughs> Let's go around this way. Don't want to get too near that dive gun contraption. It's liable to blow up. He's quite a guy. You know, for the first time in my life, I wish I were in some other business. Can't help but admire Jeb for what he's done and for what he's got up here. He'll be all right. He'll find another spot and be happy. Well, come on, let's get a little eggs and bacon. Well, they're on their way. What now? Uh, we'll give them about a half hour. Time enough for them to reach the gorge. How are we going to put that helicopter out of action? Put something in the engine. And all you have to do is ride back, get an option to buy from the old man's grandson, and we're in business. By the time that steel man gets back to town, it'll all be sewed up. You seem pretty sure of yourself. I am. I'll go on. I'll get some water and brew some more. Trying to wreck the whirly bird. All right, mister, you got a reason. It, it was Sitwell's idea. So as we could beat you back to town. Get to the old man's grandson. Hugh Collins? Boy, him. The old man owns Iron Mountain. All right, you. Start talking. Start talking fast. The old bridge. We weakened it. We figured to get the old man. Devil's Gorge. Keep an eye on Don. We don't have a minute to lose. <laughs> Hang on, 
machine that burly word some contraption all right you know after all i reckon i do owe probably something what do you say if we get back to that mr edmunds folly so i can begin to sign them papers you mean it chip you're gonna sell sure i am but don't you go get no ideas about me changing my mind about everything i still don't believe that nonsense about uh television <laughs> <laughs> well there's only one way off the mountain jeb that's the whirly bird. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you, Sonny. Let's go. Hey, wait a minute. You know, I calculate I'm going down the mountain and live with that grandson of mine. He's been aiming to get me to do that for years. Gee, that'll be great. I can visit you more often then. You sure can. And the way I've got it figured out, that young whippersnapper of a grandson of mine can do all the heavy chores. After all, he's only 65. <laughs> <laughs> Great day! <laughs> yes, 